Hi, I'm Cheryl, and today um, I have another Valentine's Day card, but I'm going to do this card for the beginner card crafters out there. The people who um, maybe they're just starting out. So uh, there's like levels of card making all the way up to, oh, I see how she did that. I can make this card. Those are the most advanced people. And then they then there's the ones that are saying, well, I don't know how to do that. How did she do that? Uh, how how do I how do I score? How do I cut? Um, what kind of papers? How do I store my papers? What kind of glue should I use? The very, very beginners, uh, and I'm gonna be talking to them and keep in mind that that um, I've bought a lot of of crafting materials, different glues, different um, dyes, inks, blah, 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 blah. So these are the things, these are my go-to um, th things and tools that I use all the time. And that's what I'm going to be um, talking about here. And I, hopefully um, I can keep some beginners from making bad purchases or um, rethinking things that they were thinking about buying for their card crafting. But anyway, this is that, that's how I'm, I'm gearing this towards a beginner. And it's quite, this is quite an elaborate card for a beginner. So this card opens up like this first. It's got a little flap and it has a sentiment on the inside here. And then it also opens this way and has a sentiment on the inside. We've got die cut lace here and here on the front. And then on the back, I have a stand so that you can stand it up and display it because it's, it's not one of your normal cards that just open like a book. So let me get, get started on the card. And if you're advanced, well, you might be bored to tears. Um, if you watch the video, though, maybe you'll pick up some tips. You never know. So, I'm going to start on the card. So, I have... Let's see, I have some, I have some Whisper White Thick Cardstock. That's going to be the back of our card that has that little stand on it, the little easel. And then I also have a plain... Whisper White. And these are eight and a half by 11 sheets of that. And then we also need a little piece of the, um, oh, I have, I pulled a strip out already that I had in here that I'm going to use for this little cross piece um, banner type of thing. And it's actually, it's just the right size. I pulled it out of my scraps and this is how I store my papers. These are Avery job ticket folders. And the um, paper fits in it just perfect, perfectly. And any of my scrap pieces go right in the front here. So that I know I have uh, smaller bits that possibly I could use rather than cutting into a full sheet. That's right, this was in here. So it's just the, it was a cut off, I'm sure, from this piece that I did. And I just stuck it in. So now I don't need to cut into one of my big pieces. I'll use this little bit here. So I'll put that aside for the moment. We're going to start with the card base. So I'm going to take my plain Whisper White cardstock here. Just the regular thickness. And I'm going to bring in my Stampin' Tremor. And let's see. I gotta look at my camera and see how we are. Okay, cause, so you can see pretty much, I think, what I'm doing here. I like the Stampin' Tremor because you can score with it or you can cut with it. It's got a light gray one for scoring, a dark gray one for cutting. And then on the back side here, it has this nice little tray thing that you can store additional um replacement trimmer blades or the scoring blades on the back and then I know where they are. This takes the place of two items. I could have had a scoreboard 
And as a matter of fact, I do have one that I never use. So I have a score, so it's a scoreboard and a trimmer. And I do have a trimmer too that I bought. Wasted money. Both of those. Wasted money because I never used them. I should, if I'd have known this was available when I bought those, I would have bought this right off the bat. I have one piece here. Place to store my extra pieces, bits, and um, I'm, I'm good to go. Oh, I put that in upside down. That's the little channel thing. So, I'm going to start with my with my, the front piece, the one that will be facing out. We need that cut five by seven. So I'm going to slide my paper over, and all across the top here are inches, and then down this part here are inches also. And I'm going to slide that over, and I'm going to cut this. I'm going to move this so it just goes just over that the line for the five inch mark. And I'm going to cut that. And I have my paper put, placed firmly against this top paper stop here. And I'm going to cut up towards that paper stop. That keeps my paper from shifting and makes sure that stays snug right up against there. That will give you a nice, um, nice cut every time. Now, this is, we're going to keep this paper. We'll be using that later. And now I'm going to turn my paper. Now I'm not going to turn it over. I'll tell you in just a minute when I'm done cutting this bit here. We're going to do the same thing with this at seven inches. We're going to have that just go over that line just a little bit. And bring my cutter down. I'm going to cut that. And we're also saving this. This would be good for other uses. Now the reason I didn't turn, I have my paper the same side facing up is because when you cut either with the trimmer or with dies, cutting dies, there's just a little ridge it leaves there. Okay, so that's the wrong side. And you know what I'm going to do? And this is a good thing for beginners also. If you can, put it somewhere where it's not going to be seen. Put a little X on your wrong side. And that way you'll always know which side is face up. It's just it just makes a nicer card. Okay, now I'll bring in my heavy weight. Is that my heavy? No, there's my heavy weight piece. That's very. It's very easy to tell the difference because you can feel the difference. And I'm going to cut this piece again, five by seven, right? But this time I am going to cut it just short of that line at five inches. This will make this piece just the tiniest bit smaller than my other piece. I'm going to cut up towards the stop. And I'll turn it and I'll do the same thing at seven inches just inside that that seven inch line. And I'll score up or cut up. And again, save these scraps. Those are perfectly good pieces of paper you can use for other applications. Okay, now to make our little um, our easel back here, I want that halfway side to side. And I'm going to make my mark on the back here. See, that's my wrong side of my paper. And I can feel that little ridge there. So I'm going to place that at two and a half. And I want it to score up halfway. So in halfway, up halfway. 
So I'm going to take my scoring blade, the light gray one, score up to three and a half. It's got a little pointer on here. So I'm just using that pointer. And there's my score line. Now you probably can't see this. And why is that so high? Let me see something here. Yeah, it's seven inches. Three and a half should be. Let me check that again. So let's see, it's one, two, three and a half. Oh, I went to the other side of it. Okay. So it's up to four and a half. So it's three and a half down. Oh my. Yes, I do make mistakes. That's not the end of the world. I'm going to make a little, just a little tick mark with my pencil where the top of that is. Then I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to measure with my ruler one half inch from the side. Now if you don't have a ruler handy, you can use these little grid marks. These are each one quarter of an inch. I can just put my paper right here, lining that up, and I can make a little tick mark right there. With two of those blocks, that's a half an inch. Now I, I do need my ruler. I need a straight edge of some sort. So I'm going to connect those two little dots, those little tick marks we made. Just a very light pencil line. And I'm going to use scissors. I'm going to cut along that line. Now when you're cutting a long line like this, use long, smooth strokes. You don't want to use little short, choppy ones because that will, that will give you a nice, choppy cut line. If you use a nice, long, smooth strokes, it'll give you a nice, smooth cut line. Okay, so now we have our score line there, and you may think, we're going to score we're going to fold it up this way but we're not we're going to fold that back this way and we're going to use something to fold that down nice and smooth now a lot of people use the bone folders i have one i seldom use it i tend to use my thumbnail or uh, usually I have a Sharpie within reach. I'll grab my Sharpie. I can use that to fold it. Okay, so now we have our little easel done and we can take our eraser and we'll just erase those little those little marks. So now we have our two pieces for the base finished and ready to go. Um, next I'll cut I'll cut this flap one here with the hearts, this piece here and this piece. So let me bring those papers in and now this pattern has a definite up and down pattern to it so make sure you remember that when you're cutting and that piece is um, three and a half and then we need seven inches long and then we're also going to need another little half inch of an half an inch flap at the top so we need to make that three and a half by seven and a half so we'll put this at three and a half that's our width Make sure that's snug up against our paper stop. Get that scoring blade out of the way. And we're going to cut. Now I'll bring that down. And bring this out to seven and a half inches. And cut up. 
and across the top we're going to have our half inch flap so I'm going to put the hat the top of it here and I'm gonna over on this side of the cutting blade there's also um, measurements up to an inch and a quarter so I'm gonna slide that over to the half inch mark on that side that way I have a good long piece here up against my paper stop I'm going to score that right there and then I'm going to slide it this way just a smidge just a tiny little smidge I'm going to score it again and then that way when we wrap that around our papers um, you know those papers take up a bit of room and this will allow for those papers and I'm going to burnish that down real well right on that piece also and I can put this now with my two base pieces next we'll cut this darker red pattern it's got a diagonal pattern on it and there's no real up and down right or wrong and that's this piece right here and that piece is four inches wide by seven so we're going to cut that let me see do I have seven inches here oh I've got plenty I'm going to turn it this way because that's more economical um, a more economical use of my paper so I'm going to cut this four inches get that scoring blade out of here that's right up against the stop and up and now it has to be seven inches but remember we cut that base just past the seven inch mark so we're going to do the same with this piece because we want that to cover completely and we'll cut that and now that's ready So now we're ready to do some die cutting. Oh, we already have this piece. I'll put that with those papers. We're going to do some die cutting. So I'm going to have to get my big shot and I'll bring that in. So let me get him over here. So here's my big shot. It, I got the one with the extended platform. Ooh, because I envisioned myself cutting massive amount of dies all at one time. Well, mostly I just think this is big and bulky and gets in the way. And I have found that you're better off not to cut massive amount of dies. You're better off to just cut one or two at a time. So I very seldom use this. I also got myself a magnetic platform because I've seen people use them in the videos and they put their piece down the magnets hold your die in place while well, I've also I have found that that is not always the case the, your your dies sometimes shift also and even though it's on a magnetic platform um, but this is the one that I use all the time because it's smaller and uh, from what I understand, it's just the tiniest bit thicker than the regular platform that comes with your um, Big Shot. So that that ensures that I get a good cut on all the lacy dies that I so love to use. So that goes down first here. And it has a crank on the side and you'll crank the crank and that feeds through the platform and it cuts your pieces. You'll notice I have a bunch of pieces of tape on my Big Shot here. That's not because I need them to hold my Big Shot together. I use the painter's tape to hold my dies in place. 
um, this is the low tack, but I still take it and I'll, I'll tap it on my clothes. Let me see. I get a piece of my clothing out here and I'll just stick it on my clothing a little bit and that makes it even a little less tacky. And then when I peel that off, I don't have to worry about tearing my paper. Now it comes with two plates, it, not the colored ones. I bought that one. Um, as a replacement plate but there comes with two clear plates and you'll have one will go on top of your platform then you'll pay, put your papers and your dies there and then the other one goes on top okay some people like to put their paper down first and cut it with their die some people like to put their die down with the cutting blades facing up and then their paper on top. I'm one of the first of those groups. I like to put my paper down first and then my die. So let's get a die out here that we're going to be using. And this is from the Heartfelt Creation Sweetheart Borders. And we'll need two of these for the front of our card. So this is going to go in here like so. And this one, um, there is no cut cutting um, edge along this edge of the die. So I'm going to place my die right here. We're just, just a little bit in from the edge. I'm going to take my bits of tape here to hold it in place. And then I'm going to run this through my big shot. Just crank it on through. All the way. And then I like to go crank it back. Take my plate off. Pull my tape off. Just carefully peel that off. It's still got plenty of sticky stuff in it. And the same on this side. Okay, now you see all those little bits, some of those bits came out. Some of them did not. Those all, those all have to be removed. And then also the ones that are still in our die have to be removed. So when I started out, I had a pin dedicated to my craft room. And I sat and I poked out all those little things. And that can be very um, cathartic. Just sitting here, meditative, zen-like, whatever you want to call it. But I'm more of the Blitzkrieg kind of crafter. So I did get myself this handy little thing. And this is a, a die tool. Stampin' Up! sells these. A lot of people sell these. And it's just a stiff bristles brush. And you put your, put your die down there and just run this over it like this. And that's going to get, you see all those little bits? That's going to get all, if not but most if not all of them out. You see, I still have that one little bit there. I'll get out another little little run. Okay. Now if you have a bit of foam like this from some kind of packaging, then you can you can just um, use that and a toothbrush, an old toothbrush. Look at that. See, it's doing the same thing. Or, like I said, you could sit with a pin and poke all those little holes out. Okay, so. I got most of them out. I'll do that. I'll get the rest off camera. And 
I'm going to just snip right here to release this die cut on each end here. And then I'll do my second one. We need two of these. I'll get all those little bits cleaned out of there. And I will save that piece of paper. This piece of paper, I'm going to do the same thing along this edge next with this die. And I'm going to save this bit here in the middle because I'm going to cut some hearts out from that. And those came from... Everything slid here. So I don't know where my... My thing went. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, there it is, way underneath the pile that slid. Okay, so there's from, I'm going to cut from the meant to be. There are some hearts in here. I'm going to cut one of these, which will give us a nice little lacy heart. And then from these, the largest one I'm going to use. And there's two pieces here. So I'm going to cut those. When I do these, I'll lay those down on here just like so. Line them up perfectly inside here. Just like that. And then I'm going to use my tape like this to hold it in place. Okay, so that I have to get up on top here and look down from above, get that lined up, and a couple pieces of this tape, and I use this tape over and over again until it's no longer sticky. And then that will go through my big shot, just like that. Okay, so I'm going to get those done because I already showed you how to how to die cut, how to get all the little lacy bits out. And I'll be back with those pieces all cut out. Now I left this dot this last die cut out here because I wanted to show you something about dies. So when you're looking um, at dies that you, you you plan to purchase now, take a good look at that die. You see all these little dots, these little holes. Let me see if I can you know, put this behind it. That'll make it easy to see. All these little holes. That's what you want to look for. You want to look for a lot of these little poke holes. Because sometimes your die cut will become trapped inside your die. And... You can take it and whack it like this and try to shake it loose, which uh, it shouldn't hurt a good quality die, but it's probably not the best of things to do to your die. But let me, um, this is another tool that Stampin' Up! makes that I'm, hap I'm very happy with. It has a lot of different little ends that go on. So it's a multi-tool in one. I like that less things for me to store, less things for me to buy. But it comes with um, two different ends here. One has ball styluses on it. And if you get into flower shaping, the, those are wonderful things to have. And the other one has, let me show you, it has this little spatula type of thing that's good for picking up like big, um, bigger uh, embellishments that already have the adhesive on it and to place it down where you want them as well as the pokey tool that's the a little pointy end here and those that's also good for doing that but this is this is wonderful for poking things out also so say my little cut piece was trapped in there 
example, I could go here with these little holes and do you see that? See, it's lifting that out of the die. You see? So that's something you want to look for in your dies. There's nothing worse than having a die cut get stuck in there. And then you have to try to pick it out this way. It's not good for the die. It's not good for your feel good um, while making cards, emotions, or mindset either. Um, on this end of the tool, it has a little sticky thing here. That's wonderful. It's for picking up sequins to place them. So it's just a, it's a nice little tool. I like it. I recommend it. Oh, there's one more and oh. Oh, and it comes with an extra um, little end here that has the sticky stuff in it for picking up the sequins. So it comes with a replacement one of those because that does get worn out after time. Okay, so we have our nice little lacy die cut here. Let me put that over on the pile so I don't lose that. And get some of this stuff cleared out here. All right, so we have our banner for the front of the card. I'm bringing in my stamp or my stamp and trimmer again. On one end of that, one half inch in, we're going to score with our little gray scoring blade, and then we're going to slide it that way, just a smidge like we did on that that other piece. We're going to score that again. And it's just a tiny little bit to allow for our papers. We're going to fold that down. We're going to burnish that. Let me grab, uh, there's my Sharpie. And burnish that down. Now we need to cut our little, our little fish tail on the end here. So let me show you how to do that. Our little piece here, I don't think I ever told you how big this was, but it's it's one inch wide and then it's five and a half inches long and then we scored it right there at the, the half inch mark. Now to make our little fish tail, we're going to measure in to the middle. So that would be at the half inch mark. Okay. So, if you've never done this before, you might want to make marks. So, let's see, where'd my pencil go? There it is. So, at the half inch mark, I'm going to make just a little mark. Then I'm going to measure up a half an inch. And I'll line that up with that little, that little mark we made there. We'll measure up a half an inch and we'll make just a little mark there. And take our nice sharp scissors and we're going to go from that mark on the edge of the paper up to the mark we measured up one half inch for and make a slit. You see that is a slit there. Now we're going to go from the corner to the top of that. And we're going to do the same from this corner. And there's our nice little fish tail. Ready to go on the card. I can put that over here with my other things. And I'm going to bring in my lacy die cuts. We're going to we're going to add a little color to the edge of these because I just felt it was too plain, just the white lace on white paper. So let's talk about sponges. Let's see, where the, there we go. There's my other sponge. No, I want, I want that one. This is the better one. 
Now these are sold as a round piece and then I cut them into eighths so they make wedges like this. These sponges are not the most wonderful ones in the world for blending and and things. What I do use these for is applying glue. Um, there's a lot of big holes. It's kind of scratchy, kind of a scratchy surface. Your better option are sponge daubers. So little things, they fit right on your finger like so. The downside on sponge daubers is this is a very small surface when you're doing blending that's not helpful. Not at all. Um, the good thing about them is if you if you're um, coloring in something there it has a small surface and you can get an even smaller surface by just using the little edge of it like this to to blend um, I'm a lazy person I don't like to have to wash sponges out so I do have dedicated sponges for each of my colors you see this is marked um, this is labeled Love, lovely lipstick um, a good option for someone starting out or even an advanced person is a makeup sponge very very fine pores on it um, it's got a nice big surface here for doing large areas of uh, shading and blending and they come with a nice little point on the end I like the teardrop ones the best I got an assortment of all different shapes um, for very little money and for a beginner you might even have a makeup sponge that that is just sitting around that you haven't used yet so this is a this is a good thing to use now, I'm going to use my little sponge dauber and I'll use my lovely lipstick ink now on my table you notice I have this pink mat here it's got circles that's because it's a baker's mat and it's made for bakers to roll out their pie doughs it also along the bottom edge here it has um, measurements marked out in inches most of mine are worn off now because I've been using this for quite quite a long time it's silicone it cleans up really nice um, I can use it for all kinds of things but it's just a lovely thing to have on your on your whatever surface you're working on it will protect it from dye inks and glues and la 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 but everything cleans off of here wonderfully so these are very inexpensive. Um, I got a deal on mine. I found two of them on Amazon for about $10. Uh, they're not quite that cheap anymore, but if you look around on Amazon, you could probably find one for about $10 for one, which if it protects your tabletop that you're working on, it's well worth the price. Um, I can put my piece, I'll put my pieces right on here. And I'll pick up a little ink from my, my stamp pad onto my sponge. And I, I like to dab it off here on my, on my mat here a little bit. And that, that helps to um, get the ink spread evenly on my sponge. And works it down into the pores so there's no big um, collection of the of the ink on higher areas even though these are uh, very fine texture and we're just going to along the edges here we're just going to go carefully because we don't want to mess up our our die cut all along the edge here and you see I'm just using a little just a little circular motion here and as I need more ink I pick it up from here And there we have just a lovely little edge of the of the lovely lipstick. Let me put a piece of paper behind. A little lovely lipstick um, edge on there. So 
when you're when you're sponging, it's best to um, to go a little lighter. You can always add more. Okay, so now I'll just do do my second one here. And as your ink dries with the with the dye based inks, it will um, become a little bit lighter. So keep that in mind. Okay, so I got my second one finished here. I've got this mess on my table. I'm just going to grab a baby wipe. It's good to have um, baby wipes or um, a damp paper towel around and for cases like this or for wiping glue off your fingers. I'll keep that handy because I may need that again. And so now we have, I believe we have everything ready. Which brings us to stamps. I have my lovely lipstick out here yet. Um, stamps and stamp blocks. I have some of my stamps already set up on my blocks. When I set them up on my block, I like to uh, I like to try to kind of line them up. with the edge of my block just because it, it's um, my eye and I imagine other people's too goes to the edges of the block when lining them up plus if you're using rubber stamps um, you can't see your print and everything on the on the um, on the front side here. You see? It's covered up. Okay. So I have a whole bunch of stamp blocks. You won't see these out on the market. I made these myself. I got three quarter inch acrylic. Cut them to the sizes I want it with a bandsaw. I found it to be much more economical. I have a video that I talk a little bit more about this. It, it's um oh what did I call it? DIY um, make your own stamp blocks or something like that. I don't know. I'll look it up and I'll put it down in the, um, down the description below here if I remember. I hope I remember. So, that's blocks and there's cling stamps. These are, these are, um, rubber ones. There's also the photopolymer ones and then there's a lot of very inexpensive, um, clear, stamps out there. They don't always make wonderful impressions. Um, so it's kind of a crapshoot whether you're going to get a decent stamp or not with those. So that brings us to stamp positioners. And I need to pull all my stamp. I'm going to close this up and bring in my stamp positioners and we'll talk about those a little bit. Before I get into the stamp platforms, I wanted to, this is, this is just a small portion of the stamp blocks that I have. Do you need all of these? Absolutely not. I have them all because, well, I do the videos. I like to have stamps set up and ready to go when I do my videos. Um, as a matter of fact, if you're just starting out, look around your house. There are probably things you can use instead of stamp blocks. For example, I have lids from, um, what is this from? Oh, body, body spray, body splash. As long as you have a flat, smooth surface on the top of them, they make perfectly acceptable stamp blocks. Watch. As long as your stamp fits on there, it will cling and you can use this as a stamp block. One thing I will say about blocks, the thicker the better because 
that will help to keep your fingers out of the ink pads and it will save you time and paper because if you get your fingers in there you probably won't notice it right away until you've already left marks on the papers that some place where you don't want these to to be here's another lid that's bigger i could put put one of these stamps on there see since stamps just fine put that back on there or for a bigger stamp here's a food storage thing it's glass you just stick that stamp right on the edge side here and use that for stamping let me put this somewhere safe so I don't drop it and break it and now we'll get into the stamp platforms my first stamp platform I bought was a mini misty it was one of the few out on the market at the time and I loved my mini misty it's small it positions the stand. It's got nice grid work on. It's got inches, blah, blah, blah. It's got magnets to hold your paper in place. You could do both the rubber or the photopolymer stamps on it with it. Um, what I didn't like is if I had something large. Let's say I wanted to do a stamp on a paper like this size. You couldn't use it for that. It would not work. But like I said, I loved my Mini Misty. They do make a larger one. But again, it's all enclosed. All the, these three sides are enclosed. So I bought that. Then Tim Holtz came out with a stamping platform. It has a side for clear stamps. It's marked on the top here, clear. And then on this side it says rubber which you have to turn it this way to read it correctly. Um, has an open side, so you could use any um, size papers you want in it. It's got the magnets to hold your paper in place. Um, it does not have the, the mat. Um, a, a surface that's hard like this, though, doesn't always give the best impressions. And... This was rather large to have to store somewhere. So Stampin' Up! came out with the um, Stamparatus, which I found to be my perfect stamping platform. This is not a you have to have this when you're first starting out thing. This is a, I really want to get this later on a stamping thing so it comes with two of these plates i actually purchased two extra ones too it gives you four different places to stamp i have some stamps on here oh that stamps just too close to the edge let me move that a little further away and so you stamp this way, you can turn it, take, pull this out, stamp another image this way. We have this one, we could, so we've had four sides here. I can have four different stamps or stamp patterns set up to use this. Um, this wonderful thing about stamp platforms is that if you're using multiple stamps like I have here you can line them all up beforehand you do a little test stamp and then you stamp on your regular card um, the way I like to line these up is this use the grid work that's on here I don't know if you can see the grid work because it's it's um, not real bold but I place a straight edge along the bottom of my print and I look on the ends here and see if that's straight um, if you're doing multiple cards that are the same you can use it for 
you know, to do a kind of a mass production type of thing, which is wonderful at Christmas time or Easter, where you're sending a lot of cards out. Um, so it's, it also keeps, I'm a rock and roller. What that means is when I stamp, I'm exaggerating. I tend to roll it like this. And then from the edges of the stamp, you get these little dog ears or halos or whatever you want to call them. Um, this eliminates that. You can stamp rubber or the photopolymers on here also. It has a foam mat here and magnets, which store on the back here. And the one thing, the one problem about the stamp apparatus that is not only I have found, but many other crafters have found, is that when you're close to the edge here, it tends to um, n not make good contact with the paper. So I add just a little piece of thin craft foam in here, and then it also gives me that nice squishy surface to stamp on. But Stamparatus is my favorite one. Um, I think I'm going to sell my other two just because I don't want to have to store them anymore. So this is a wonderful thing. Plus there's a technique you can do if you want to do. Say I wanted to make a row of these hearts. Okay, say so I'll, I'll put pretend that's paper in there. I'm going to put this on my paper like so. Pick that up. I can stamp that heart. And if I don't make a good impression, I can ink that up again and stamp it again. Okay, as many times as I need it. And it's going to be exactly, exactly the same place. Now, I just pull this out, move it over one, and stamp my next heart. And my next heart and my next heart all the way across the paper and they will all be perfectly lined up all across the paper make a lovely little heart border which it doesn't have to be a heart it could be anything flowers leaves um just dots i don't know so that's stamping platforms do you need it for starting out? Hmm, no. Um, I, over time, this has saved me a lot of money on papers, I'm sure, because I don't have to redo a stamp image. So, that being said, uh, we have one more piece of paper to cut, and that will go on the inside of our card. That we we'll flip this open, flip this open, and that is this piece. And I cut this piece at 3 by 5. And you can make it a little smaller, you can make it a little bigger, as long as it hides behind this flap. Any of those sizes are, any size is perfectly acceptable. So let me grab a piece of paper here. I have my Whisper White, and it's just the plain Whisper White. Oh, I have my magnet here still. Oh, where can I put that? I'll put it right there. So we're going to cut a piece that's 3 by 5 with our trimmer. Three. And line up with five. Okay, so now all of our parts for the card are ready, I believe. We can start to put it together. Do I have all of these? Yes. Let's do some stamping. I'll start out with my large stamp that went on the inside. I'll use my lovely lipstick. Mm. 
I'm going to ink this up real well. Some people like to slide it and then dab it. I found that usually just dabbing it around is fine. Um, ink pads. When you buy an ink pad, if you can do it, if you can afford it, and they have them available, always buy the refill for them at the same time you buy your your ink pad. Nothing worse than being than working on a card and then having your ink pad go dry on you. Okay, so then we'll check our our stamp to make sure that we're stamping it the right way. And center it and go straight down. Hold it for about three seconds or so and give the ink a chance to transfer from the pad, your um, stamp onto your paper. And then lift straight up. And we got a pretty nice impression there. Um, this stamp came from, let's see, Heartfelt Creations for My Friends Sentiment. And it says, to the world you may, may be one person but to me, you are the world. And they have that one there. And another one we're going to use is the With All My Love. Okay, so we're going to put this one aside. And on one of these hearts that we cut out, I'm going to stamp With All My Love. I'm going to take this little stamp off for the moment and ink this one up and put that right down the center of our heart so straight down give it a few seconds to transfer and straight up then i used this little stamp and that was from the stampin up meant to be there's a little stamp right there and it's got like little flowers on it. I'm going to stamp stamp a couple of these just in random patterns on my thing there. And when you're adding embellishments or things like this, an odd number always looks better. Um, Three is a nice odd number. You could do six, but groups of three. Okay, so I have a couple of nice little hearts there to fill in my blank space. And then we need to stamp within this heart. I'm going to just place this on here. Like so. You know what? I'm just going to glue it on. We're going to go for it. So I'm going to use my Designer's Dries Clear Glue because if I should get some oozing out, then it will not be sticky like the Tombow glue would be. So I'm going to use that. And I did purchase this, this very fine tip. The tip that comes with it is just this black cap here and that's pretty good oh I see one little piece here that I did not did not get out let me see if I can just pick that out quickly I'll use the the pin that came in the cap since it's here and handy That's a stubborn little piece there. But I want it out. I need it out. Okay. I got it out now. So on the back side here, I'm just going to put some glue. Just any place I can find. Hmm. Any place I can find uh, an area put some glue 
I'm not gluing the entire thing on this one. Just dot that on there. We want to work fairly quickly because we don't want our first bits of glue we put down to dry. And I'll just center that on this other heart. We have just a nice little lacy bit there. And cap that glue right away. You don't want to have a ruined glue bottle because you didn't you didn't close it up quickly. And then I'll use this stamp. And that says for you. And that came from, oh, here it is. That came from this stamp set, Beauty Abounds, for you, right there. You could probably skip this if you wanted to. Now I'm going to try to get it inside the lacy part. Make sure that I'm stamping it the right way. And one, two, three, and straight up. And I did get some a little bit on my die cut, but that's fine. If that's the worst that happens to me today, I'm in good shape. So now we can start to put the card together. We have everything ready here except for one thing. I'm going to take this one that we just stamped. I'm going to turn that over. I'm going to take one of these heart edges. I'm going to turn that over also and line that up. I want this to be all one piece, not two separate pieces. So I'm going to cut some little strips of paper. I'm going to take my glue, put a little glue on that paper, and just, I'm not going to cover the entire back here, edges, I'm going to glue, adhere them together. And this paper is just like printer paper, very thin paper. I'm not looking to add bulk to this, this die cut. And we're just doing it on, on the one pair of these. Oop. Some glue on there. Smear it around a little bit. And I'll stick that on up here. Making sure that it doesn't go past the edge. We don't want to see this. Oh, come on little piece of paper. Do that up here also. And then that helps to, to make our piece like one solid piece. So let me get everything out here and we'll get, get our card put together. So let's get started putting this card together. The first thing I'm going to put down, and I have my plain piece here of my Whisper White. There's my little X, that's the back side. I'm going to attach my little lacy border pieces and I'm going to use my Tombow glue. That will give me time to adjust where I want them. And I'll just put a little line of Tombow down this 
edge strip here and I place that right here I want my edges of my lace to just be touching the side of my card and we'll glue that down if a little bit of that oozes out there it's not going to be a problem we're going to cover that up so there won't be any sticky glue exposed and we'll do the same thing on this side and we'll just position that so that the lace just touches the side just touches the edge there okay now we can put this piece on and we'll do the same thing put some Tombow on the back that will give us just a little bit of time to position that in the center and take a little bit of time to make sure that it's centered on your card that the next thing we will do I'll put this piece down and that's going to go it's going to go it's a little bit higher to the top but it's going to be centered side to side so again Tombow glue you don't need a whole lot of it on there and again don't get too close to the edges because don't want any of that sticky glue exposed and then we can put this piece with our little folded tab here and we just put some that Tombow on that tab and place it on just like this you know, line that up so that's centered on your on your um, red piece with the diagonal dots just fold that over get that all nice and stuck down there next we need to put our hearts with our banner on what we're going to do first we're just going to hold our banner in place or just place it in place I'm going to put just a little dab of the Tombow right there in the center I'm going to put my heart on here and try to line that up let's see Now, while that's still wet, right away, I'm going to carefully turn this over and check the back. I'm going to make sure that that's lined up good. And I did come out very nicely on this one on my original card. It was a little wonky, and I needed to make a little bit of an adjustment. So, because it's the Tombow, I had a little bit of time to do that. So I have that attached, and just to make sure I don't get glue on this part of the card, I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to attach this piece and this piece. I'm going to do the border one first because that's very important that that one lines up with the edges of the one that's on the front here. So I'm going to just put some designers dries clear glue on here. Why? Because there's a real good chance this is going to ooze out maybe just a little bit but I'm going to be very careful use just a little bit of glue here to try to avoid that from happening see I have a little bit on my table and we'll line this up so that it's just exactly lined up with the scallops 
on the other piece on the front. Now this piece will fit just perfectly right within that. Oops. Oh dear. That's all right. Because that glue is not quite dry yet. I can just put that back down. And you could use either the Designer's Dries Clear or the Tombow. I'm going to use the Tombow. I'll go back to the Tombow. And just put, put a little bit of that on there. A little goes a long way. Not, and again, don't get too close to the edge with it. And we're just going to slide that right in there, right on top. Or right inside that other, this little scalloped border. Now we're ready to attach this to our card front. So I'll put some of my Tombow on my little tab here. I want that to be uh, pretty much in the center here. We'll just fold that over now. Give that a little squeeze. Make sure that's stuck down real well. And we're ready to put the back part on. So I have this piece folded under. We don't want to put any glue on that part. I'm going to put the glue. Oop. Let me wipe that up. I don't want to get that somewhere I don't want it. And all the way around. And we'll put some in this big area. This open area here. And we can line that up. And I find it helps if you stand it up like this. And then just tap everything into position. Press that down a little bit. Make sure that's got a good contact. And there we go. Our card is finished. You can stand it up to display like so. Or maybe not. You know what we didn't do? We didn't trim this. This is makes it so it stands straight up and down and because of that it tends to fall forward because of all the weight here. I'm going to go about a half an inch up here and take my scissors and go from that half inch right on over to the fold. That way our card will lean back just the tiniest little bit. And there we go. Our card's complete. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to card making, I hope I gave you some helpful um, advice and tips while making this card. Um, did you ever think you'd make something this elaborate? I, I don't know. Maybe that was your game plan to start out with but if there let's see if there's any um, stamping up products that you'd like to purchase then um, you can do that either through my website or my blog and I have those uh, addresses listed down below there um, if you have any questions or comments please leave them down below um, I'm always looking to to um, make better videos, um, help people out. Uh, we all started out with now what do I do kind of attitude when we were first start making cards. I, I watched oh hundreds and hundreds of videos. I did more video watching than I did actual card making when I first started out. But I hope this is helpful to you. Um, and as always, I'll list all of the materials 
that I used down below. And if I remember, what was it I was supposed to... I was supposed to put something somewhere. Hmm. Oh, well, I forget. I forget now. I should have written it down. I'm at that age. I'm 62. Give me a break. <laughs> I forget to do things. I'm this like I wander into a room and I was going to do something there and I've forgotten by the time I get there. But um y'all take care. Stay safe and happy stamping.